Hello everyone and welcome to Little Norton. This is our new map for our new series and it's set in the wonderful British countryside. This is the agency edition created by GB Modding which allows us to open up seasons, maze plus, precision farming and all sorts of additional crops within this map. So let's get started. Okay, so here we are, starting off at the pub. It is rather a nice place to start off, if you ask me. Let's go around to the front here and see. Here it is, the old oak. Cool. So this is a start from scratch map mode. Uh, we have £500,000, but we have no land and we have no equipment as you can see. So it is our mission to find a place to buy and find some equipment to start off with. I should also mention the rules I'm going to follow as part of this map and series. We of course have seasons enabled, maze plus including the forage extension and the CCM extension although I'm not sure how much I will use those. We also have precision farming and then in regards to some of the other settings we have uh, periodic plowing on liming and weeding on but uh, crop destruction is turned off and I'm going to be looking to balance it between five times and 15 times speed depending on our needs cool I should also mention that we are doing six day seasons and we start in early spring as you can see. So our first step is to buy a tractor and to go find our farm of choice. I've already had a good look at what we should buy and there is the cell or the shop part of the map which is actually a John Deere shop. So my feeling is for this series we should go with a bit of a John Deere theme. I've never had a John Deere tractor in Farming Simulator so it seems good to try it out. We are going to go for the 6R series and the large one. I am strapped for money but my feeling is that we should invest in one bigger higher horsepower tractor to be able to do all the range of jobs we're going to need on the farm initially. So this is one I had a look at and looks to be good for starting out. Um, nothing worse than starting off with a tractor that's too low on horsepower and we can't really get off the ground running. So we're going to go with this. We're going to need a front hydraulic for when we're going to have front attachments. Keep the wheels as Trellborg. But we will need some weights. So just the standard wheel weights. We are going to be using the used uh, mod, which enables us to get a discount and keeps it realistic in my mind, as in real life you can buy used machinery. Uh, we don't need the Starfire receiver. I think we'll go for the panoramic roof so we can see out of it. And GPS, we don't need that. That's a nice to have. Engine, we are going to beef this up right to the 259 horsepower. Front load attacher, yes. And beacon lights, yeah, we're going to get both, aren't we? Don't need the decals. And fenders, I think we'll just keep as the standard. So a big outlay initially, £131,560. But... To be getting a 260 horsepower tractor at this stage with weights and front um, front loader attachment and also the uh, front hydraulic is a pretty good price. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and buy that. And I have had it delivered right here at the pub. So we can hop straight in it. I haven't had any pints, I promise. Let's fire her up. 
looks nice and clean on the inside which is interesting for a used vehicle but on the outside as you can see it's looking a little bit worn in places not to worry we will get it serviced up quite nicely so we are going to head over to the farm area that we're going to buy got to remember to drive on the left here since we have moved from Ravenport which is based in America we are now in Great Britain and probably somewhere up north because it looks quite hilly don't get any hills from where I'm from in Norfolk it's very very flat Cool. So I have picked out a farm which doesn't have any animal pens attached to it just yet. My plan is that we're not really going to have enough money to start off with to get animals up and running and nor are we going to have the materials, uh, the crops they eat and also the straw and other miscellaneous things they need to be at a good efficiency. So we're going to start off with a crop only farm and then we'll move into the animal side of things as we go. Cool, so here we are at the farm that I think we're going to purchase first and foremost. I'll show you on the map. It is this area here. We have a farmhouse, which is this and a shed and a decorative building at the back and then at the front we have a yard, we haven't bought it yet, but we can drive in to have a little look. We are an interested buyer. So there's quite a bit of space, storage, and it comes with field number nine. So we are going to go ahead and purchase that. It's £134,088. So, again, another outlay but this is going to be very much essential for us to get the farm up and running, stash our equipment and get a crop in. Cool. So one thing I do want to do as part of the farm setup is I want a insurance policy. And what I mean by that is it's going to be quite easy starting off with low funds to get into a position where we run really low and we're just waiting and waiting for money to come in from crops which are going to wait for the later seasons before we can harvest and sell. So I'm going to invest in some placeables that are going to bring in some income to the farm without us needing to do very much other than charge us a daily maintenance fee. So. Let's have a quick look at the placeables that I think are going to be well suited to this farm. The first and foremost is the cellular antenna. It's a thousand pounds, costs us four pounds per day, but brings us in 15 pounds per hour, presumably from the network company. And yeah, the reception here in Little Norton is not that great. So they have welcomed us putting this in place. And I think tucked up around the back here, out of the way, is probably where it's best going to sit. So that is placeable number one. Next, we are going to place a windmill. And yeah, let's just go back and have a look at that. So £9,000, but will bring us £150 per hour. And that doesn't cost us anything in the daily rate. So yeah, a good placeable with just a initial cost outlay. I think we will place that somewhere out of the way over here. There we go. Cool. And then we shall move on down here to the watermill. Our farmhouse needs water, of course, and we will put a mill in place somewhere over here. There we go. That is £70,000, costs us £15 per day, but 
brings in £500 per hour, which is pretty good. Two more placeables to go. And the next one is a weather station. This is going to be essential as we are running seasons. So we need to get all of our forecast information in to help us. But we will, of course, be supplying the local area with a forecast as well. So that is £2,500. Costs us £15 per day, but brings us in £15 per hour, which is pretty good. Right, and the last one we need is, of course, a toolbox. I'll probably have to add in a water tap somewhere later when we need it. But I'm thinking that we will probably put the toolbox somewhere down here. Near the entrance there, so we can service our vehicles as we need to. Cool. Alrighty. So that is all the placeables placed. You can hear the watermill spinning away there. And yes, they will probably take uh, a day or two to get fully up and running. Some of them start bringing in money immediately, but others take, uh, I think, two full days to actually get up to the full uh, money making. So let's have a quick drive through to our new field, field number nine. And we'll get the gate open. There we go. So quite a sizable field and we can see that it has got sugar beet that is withered in it. So we're going to need to turn that over. We don't have any information for it at the moment uh, in terms of the precision farming, but we know it's withered and luckily it doesn't need ploughing, but we are going to have to turn the sugar beet over to clear it for what we want to plant. Um, and as I mentioned, there's no information on the soil types, the pH or the nitrogen as yet. So that is going to be our first job on the farm. We need to get that field prepped for when the ground temperature is a little bit higher and we can get something planted. So I'm going to whiz over to the shop. I'm going to buy the class crop sensor. I think it's class, which we are going to use to scan the field as we turn over the sugar beet that's withered. And in terms of the plough, I'm going to buy the trusty lizard subsoiler, which is six metres wide, a good price, and only needs about 30, 130 odd horsepower to run it. There's just no other ploughs or subsoilers that do the same job. So I know I used that in Ravenport, but I'm going to use it again because it's a good piece of equipment. So yeah, I'll head over to the shop and I will see you back at the farm. Okay, so we are back at the farm and I need to get all of our new equipment serviced. We of course bought it used. So we repair the lizard subsoiler six meters for up to full condition. Uh, the class crop sensor, 161, and then tractor, 1186. Cool, so we are full condition. So all of our equipment and land has set us down to 170,000 
350 pounds. But we have enough money in the bank and luckily we have some placeables which are going to help us. Uh, they're probably going to go a very long way to help us actually with the success of this farm and hopefully ensure that we're not going to get into any money stalemates. So I'm going to unfold the crop sensor, turn that on. I'm then going to get the lizard subsoiler in position so we can start turning over this withered bigger beet. Here we go. We are scanning as we plough and turn over. So I need to have a bit of a think about what crop I should plant first. It needs to be one that I can plant in early spring and have a low enough ground temperature germination uh, rate so we can plant it. I'm of course going to have to lime and fertilise this field. As you can see the nitrogen looks to be very low and no doubt the pH will be as well. So in the next session I'm going to have to spend some more money buying a lime and fertiliser spreader. I don't have any natural fertiliser yet as we don't have any animals but I believe there are some natural fertilising buying points built into this map. So I'll have a little look and see what will be best uh, money-wise uh, in terms of the equipment and also how much it will cost and how expensive uh, man-made fertiliser is compared to natural. But I think it is a good chance to stop and have a little look at the crops we've got available. So we've got the standard wheat, barley, oat, canola, sunflower, soybeans and corn, potatoes and sugar beet, uh, egg. Eggs looks to be a pretty good um, price in this map. So I'm thinking that some of the crops might be geared towards uh, getting chickens set up as soon as possible. So we'll look into that. Um, and then as part of some of the um, maize plus and also the crops built into this map we've got WCS uh, I don't know what that stands for but uh, that's in here we've got alfalfa semi-dry hay and silage of the same clover and then again semi-dry hay and silage field grass carrot and onions I'm looking forward to trying carrot and onions later on they will require quite a bit of money to rent or purchase the harvester that you need for that so you might have to wait till a little bit later in the farm's maturity crop swath semi hay horse hay horse silage and then some of the additional crops triticale rye spelt miscanthus and then we have sugar in there as well so um yeah i think there are some productions um within this uh, map we've got um, the sugar beet add-on uh, allowed as well so I think these are part of that sugar beet pulp feed pellets molasses and then we've got fresh maize maize silage standard grass silage silage grass CCM uh, raw CCM and then silage clover silage alfalfa corn stalks canola straw and soybean straw that's as part of the straw me mod and then we've got soybean oil sunflower oil uh, as that's because i've got some productions mods installed as well we may not get to use those but we shall see it looks like the straw me mod doesn't benefit us very much in this map these don't sell for anything but they will contribute towards the straw for animals and so forth Cool, so that's a look at the crops we've got available to us in this map. And yeah, some of these look like the prices are on the rise. 
so it'd be good to try those. In terms of what we need for chickens, we will need wheat, sugar beet or carrot, soybean, corn or barley. And I think we'll probably need all three to get up to 100%, but uh, we've only got one field, so we'll probably have to pick one of those. And um, yeah, I'll probably pick the best price out of those. And it'll have to be a grain crop like wheat and or soybean or barley um, for the equipment cost reasons. So I am going to get the rest of this field turned over and I will see you when we are finished. Okay, so I am just finishing off the final strip. It has been quite a big job that has taken us up to lunchtime. But good to get it all turned over. I missed a bit just up there on the right hand side, the border of the field. So I'll tidy that on the way back up to the yard. Worth noting that the field to the right is a grass field and I'm probably going to purchase that when we have enough funds. We will need a grass field and we have some silos in the farmyard which will be good for making some silage. We will have to purchase the BGA in order to sell that but uh, the BGA is actually quite a modest price so I feel like that will be achievable and we will of course need grass, silage um, and hay for any animals we want to have in the future. So that is the field turned over that's going to be it for the first episode quite a uh, long job first and foremost getting that field turned over we of course had to purchase our tractor come over to the farm check it out we had our placeables uh, to select and put in at the farm that will be our guaranteed income which will be good if we fall on hard times or if we're stuck waiting for money to come in from crops or whatever else so we will always have a good trickle of money into the farm 
Yep, so that is it for the first episode of Little Norton. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please let me know your thoughts uh, on the map, on the style of gameplay, the farm I've selected, the equipment I've selected. I'll be keen to know your thoughts. This is a great map. It looks fantastic. Uh, there's a few animations and yeah, everything that sort of comes as part of the map is very, very nice. So yeah, a huge thanks for any views and also a huge thanks for any likes and comments. Um, in the next session, we will be getting this field limed and I will probably buy a direct drill uh, so we can uh, drill it on the ploughed ground, um, put whatever crop we select in there. If you've got any crop ideas, let me know. And we will also hopefully be able to get a drill that can fertilise as well. So that is it. Hope you've enjoyed watching and I will catch you next time. See you later. Bye bye.